So, good to have you. Thank you. It's nice to be here, and I'm glad we can talk about AI today. I know, I know. I'm, I'm really happy that uh, I'm really happy that you decided to join. But uh, and I wanted to kind of uh, just start by uh, uh, really focusing on you. Um, and if you can tell us a little bit about yourself, and, and and then we'll dive into what you're doing with AI. And then uh, if others join, we can just open up open it up for conversations. Or I do have lots of questions, so love yes. to uh, get your feedback on that. Wonderful. So a little bit about me. My name is Annabelle Hasty, and I am the CSAI and music teacher. And I teach at Quest Academy, which is an independent gifted school in the suburbs of Chicago. So I currently teach kindergarten through fourth grade. And, uh, you know, one of the topics that we've been exploring, we started about two and a half years ago at Quest and just exploring how can we infuse artificial intelligence into the curriculum that we are teaching. So, um, you know, when people ask what is artificial intelligence, we talk about how it's computer systems able to perform tasks that normally require human intelligence, such as visual perception, speech recognition, decision making and translation between languages. Um, and I love this quote by Andrew Ng. It says, it is difficult to think of a major industry that AI will not transform. This includes healthcare, education, transportation, retail, communication, and agriculture. Every bit of our students' lives as they get older, and if you're a parent, your child's life is going to be impacted by AI. They may not be specifically in a field that is creating AI, but their field will probably be impacted as well as they get older. So it's already affecting our lives in so many ways. So learning about it, I think, should be a requirement for all kids um, across the United States just to teach them what their lives are going to be and what's surrounding them. So at Quest Academy, it was kind of a perfect storm where we could put together the design principles um, and we could be inclusive and logical and ethical and have it integrated into our curriculum. We also used a lot of the AI for K-12, five big ideas, which I really love. They include perception, representation and reasoning, learning, natural in- interaction, and societal impact. So those are the five big ideas that when we created our curriculum at Quest Academy, we really kept in mind. And if you're a parent, it is not too early to start teaching your child about um, artificial intelligence. There's so many ways and there's so many tools that you can use. And I just want to mention maybe a few of my favorites that I've been using teaching it to even kids as young as kindergarten. So Cosmo Robot is one of the robots that I really love. And I know that you use it a lot at Ready AI as well. And it's a small robot with many abilities. Um, you can train Cosmo to play games, stack blocks. You can have it, you know, it can talk to you in all different ways. And it's great for, you know, one-on-one with the robot or up to about three kids working with a Cosmo robot. And it's great for teaching facial recognition. One thing that I did is I put three different celebrity faces. We talked about how, you know, we're not using our own face so much when we're using facial recognition. And, you know, that's one of the ethical concepts that we talk a lot about at my school. But we talk about how facial recognition is something that's really important in a lot of devices and cameras that are all around us right now. So with um, with Cosmo, you can actually train the Cosmo robot to identify different celebrity faces. So we did Selena Gomez and we did Will Smith and the robot had to identify, you know, the different faces and, you know, it can actually say the name of each character, which the students just absolutely loved. We also use the boxer robot, and that one's easy to move, and it really delights students. It's kind of like a little blue mini car, and the boxer robot is awesome because you can teach about sensors with that one. So we build little structures with Kiva blocks or Lincoln logs. We were studying colonial times, and the students could actually learn about how the boxer robot can get around. Uh, it can use, you know, all sorts of sensors, and it can find the way, the proximity sensors find the way in and out of kind of the mazes that we were creating as well. Um, There are many robots that don't have artificial intelligence that you can also use for teaching artificial intelligence, such as like robots like the Ozobot, which is great for color sensors, robots like Dash Robot, which are wonderful just for, you know, controlling and learning about the concepts. 
But I'm going to specifically talk about some of the AI robots that I've found that kids love and other resources that just really can impact students in a positive way. All of these resources are just being created and they're being refined. So every time that I go back to them, there's either a new model that's coming out or a website that's changed. So just so you know, the field is changing so quickly for children and AI that it's fun to keep on top of it. An easy one, if you don't have any robots at home, but you want to teach your child more about AI is just to use something like an Amazon Alexa or a Google Home, which many have in their houses. Amazon is, um, you know, it's a virtual assistant that's easily recognizable to kids. And they've already probably asked Alexa to play all sorts of music for them. But you can take it one step further. You can talk to them about speech recognition. You can play a 20 questions game with Alexa and see, you know, can Alexa figure out what you're doing? Talk to the students and talk to the children about how Alexa is making those decisions, how it's, you know, been trained and how it uses AI as well. I really like talking about ethical concepts in my classes. So whether it's with my own children, I'm a mother of two, or whether it's my students and, you know, that's 150 different kids that I'm teaching throughout the week. I love to talk to the students about, you know, what are the ethical concerns that you need to think about when using AI? And, you know, obviously one is even with Alexa, you know, if you're leaving it on all the time, what is Alexa hearing and recording, you know, bringing forward some of those articles and then saying, you know, there are things to be cautious about. And there are also things that, you know, when you're aware of them, you know, you can turn off devices. You can also use it when you need it. You can use it, you know, in certain ways that make it safer. So just talking to students about how to use facial recognition and speech recognition regularly help as well. I also love to talk to students about the societal impacts of AI. I think that's where, even if you have very little experience with artificial intelligence, I think that's where you can really hit home. So one project that we do is about ocean cleanup and machine learning. So I take two empty water bottles and I use the program Teachable Machine. And with Teachable Machine, you can train in just a couple of minutes. I did it with my second grade students this week. In just a few minutes, you can train uh, Teachable Machine to tell the difference between two plastic bottles. And Teachable Machine is on Experiments by Google. If you just, if you just look that one up, it's a free program. Um, and what we talked about is how can oceans be cleaned up using artificial intelligence. And the students found this so fascinating. I even, uh, in my class, I even flew a drone over the class just to kind of show them how the cameras could be attached to the drone with the, you know, and how it can tell the difference between things like jellyfish and plastic bottles. You know, wh why would it be important that you don't pick up a jellyfish in the ocean when you're trying to pick up trash? And the students get so into that concept and, oh yeah, you know, a translucent jellyfish could look like it or a turtle might look like an empty can. So we talk a lot about how you have to train and the students learn that it's not 250 pictures like they're using with Teachable Machine. It's millions of pictures and it's teaching the, you know, it's using that machine learning in the process as well. So that's just like an example of the societal impact. And we had a researcher actually come and talk to the students about how they're using AI to clean up the oceans. So any resources that you can find it as well, which kind of leads me to um, the AI in Me books, which I love. They're from Ready AI. And, you know, we use them all the time. They teach the students with brightly colored pictures, and they also allow the students to kind of have a flow of where they're going. It goes through the five big ideas, but with each one, for example, it talks about Alexa, and then you can take out either an Alexa or a device that you have at home. It talks about how, you know, phones are being used, and then you can show on your phone, look, there's facial recognition. It's bringing up these photos of you. It's already recognizing your face. You are going to be impacted by this. What do you want to keep in mind as you get older? If you put pictures of yourself on the Internet, you know that the you know, facial recognition can find you. You know that those will be put together. What do you want to think about as you're getting older? Because these students are starting pretty much as infants with their images being online or with their pictures being taken when they're, you know, outside of the house. So I find it so important to talk to children about, well, what's important to know, what's important when you're sharing on social media, your own, you know, by the time students are in fifth grade, now they're starting to use, sometimes younger, they're starting to use all sorts of social media. And I think keeping those concepts in mind from the beginning is really important as well. One of the things that I find important is to consult with experts in the field of AI. 
So we've got a professor from the University of Illinois, Dr. Clara Narnstead, that we've been talking to, and Dr. Rebecca Willett, and she's at University of Chicago. Um, as well as at Microsoft, we've been talking to Willie Mason. So we'd like to check in with the experts in the field to say, what do you feel that young kids today need to learn about artificial intelligence? With the field changing at the rate it's changing, and with the knowledge in each different area needing experts in the field to even kind of comprehend which way it's going, I think that consulting with experts in the field or looking to others who are consulting with experts in the field is really important because something that was created two years ago in AI, sometimes those robots aren't around. Sometimes something's wrong with, you know, the ethical aspects of it. Sometimes some of the websites aren't appropriate for certain age children. So I do think that it's important to keep track and to keep on it when you are sharing things with kids. Um, you know, sometimes I like to use things like chat bots and things like that to show my students just how a robot is talking to you. Kids start to feel that when they're chatting with a chat bot that it is a human. And we talk a lot about how, you know, that's not a person behind there. It has been programmed. And as we're doing this more and more, and we're talking about self-driving cars this week, and just each of the concepts that AI is touching in their lives, they start to put it together. You know, I teach a coding class with my AI class, and the students say, oh, I get it. So just like I'm putting in the block of code, somebody has created it. And then I say, yeah. And then they're like, oh, yeah. And just like with teachable machines, how it can learn more, and it can use those representations that we've given it to create its own I say, yes, you know, that's what's happening with the chatbot. It's using some of your words. It's using some of, you know, the things you're saying to it. But then it's also looking to other things. It's trying to give you the answer that you're looking for. And again, those ready AI books come in handy because it explains each of those concepts in words children can understand. So making sure that you're not using vocabulary that's kind of out of their realm, but at the same time exposing them to words. A kindergartner is not too young to understand the word spatial recognition. You know, if you start mentioning the word face in there, if you start saying recognizing, you can break those words down and you can teach them at young ages about how these devices in our house. And then just talking to them about the difference between a remote control car as opposed to a car, you know, a self-driving car with AI, how the cars are different, how Amazon uses all sorts of things. I loved one example was I asked the first grade students, which of the following things would you not want to give an AI bot online? Which information do you not want to give to them? And the choices were your, your social security number, your birth date, where you live, and your mother's credit card number. And, you know, it took the kids a little while. You know, I said there could be more than one answer. And some, one kid goes, Mrs. Hasty, I gave my birth date to an uh, AI robot yesterday. I didn't know that I'm not supposed to. And we just talked about that. You know, like, what are things that you're supposed to do online, they are being asked all the time. Every time, you know, they're online, any site that they're on is asking them questions. So instead of just banning things from children, if you teach them which things they should be using and how to reply to things, you know, they can ask an adult if they're not sure about whether or not to give information out. They can ask a trusted adult, is this something I should answer? Or mom, it's asking me for your credit card number. Is that something I should put in here? You know, credit card is sometimes laying around the house. They can easily get it and enter it. But, you know, understanding why you don't want to give out that information. We talk about how all four of those things are things you want to keep private and you want to use for only trusted things that, you know, your parents have approved. So that's just a little basic, you know, information about some of the things we're doing about Quest Academy. I could talk all day about, you know, questions students have, things that they love to get into, but I just wanted to start out with that. And two resources that I highly recommend are CS First. Um, if your child is looking for some coding and some experience with AI as well, CS First has started to put artificial intelligence. They work with ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education, to really create amazing lessons for teachers, um, parents, and students that talk about coding and computer science and now artificial intelligence as well. And then code.org is another free program that allows students and allows children to learn about the concepts of AI, learn about coding in a very child-friendly manner. You know, from youngest grades, about kindergarten to fourth grade, those sites are really great for getting started. One helps you get started with Scratch. One helps you get started with 
all sorts of, you know, code.org has got all sorts of Elsa characters and other characters that the children will relate to from Angry Birds, um, you know, to Ice Age. So there's very kid-friendly things out there, but you also need to just monitor and, and be aware of what is appropriate for children at the different ages. So, Ruth, I'm going to, you know, bring you back into the conversation here. Thanks for letting me chat a little bit about Quest Academy and what we're doing there. No, this is this is amazing, Annabelle. You know, yeah, it's so engaging, like uh, everything that you've mentioned about what you've been doing, also all the resources that you're making available. By the way, I encourage everybody else to join the conversation um, uh, if, if you like to, because I like to uh, hear uh, other people's experience. Um, and it, it really helps other teachers, also other parents. You know, Annabelle, you, um, uh, it was so interesting you talked about uh, uh, the questions uh, that uh, – or the answers that kids would be giving to an intelligent agent, to AI, you know, from yeah. cre- parents' credit card number. I didn't know if at that age I had, I did know my parents' credit card <laughs> number, but maybe, maybe these kids do know. But anyway. Well, yeah, we're all home now. You know, everyone is in the house a lot of times. Kids are learning from home. Parents are at home. People are trying to even like, you know, when they take their credit card out because someone else is touching it, sometimes they place it somewhere else. So it's on counters. People can see people's walls all the time. So everyone's in each other's spaces these days, especially. So yes, credit cards are around as well. <laughs> That's right. Now, here's a, here's a question that I have um, regarding uh, just broader AI conversations and AI concepts. Uh, you, you did mention these concepts in AI, the five big ideas, you know, from... Uh, perception, like how AI sees the world or how AI makes choices or how AI learns or how, frankly, we work with AI and actually how AI can change the world. So, but putting all these topics aside, um, do you think uh, both regardless of the tools, uh, be it uh, the tools that are going to be uh, kids are using uh, in school or out of school, um, do you think uh, uh, we are having enough com- conversations with kids in general. By that, I mean teachers and parents about AI in general. Is this, uh, or is this just becoming more of a back and forth of, uh, let's teach kids about, for example, what is AI, what is not AI? I wonder if if you have any sense of whether or not this genuine AI conversation is taking place. That's that's a great you know, question, and that's sort of the question that got me really fired up about this topic. Every friend that I talk to, and I mean, between friends, colleagues, I would say, you know, maybe a pool of about 200 people, and I'm outside of Chicagoland, so I'm, I'm in the suburbs here, and, you know, many people, many parents especially, they don't want to give their kids wrong information. So in order to not provide their students or their children with incorrect information, they're avoiding the topic altogether. So people will say, you know, you can only have a phone at this age or you can't go on YouTube for this reason. But they're not explaining, you know, what they're actually concerned about or privacy issues. You know, there was this great example about how when we were little, there was a lot of talk about the Saturday morning cartoon commercial, how there was all this up, you know, you know, uproar about. You know, if the commercial wasn't totally appropriate for a kindergarten age kid, for a five-year-old, they're watching cartoons, that commercial shouldn't be on there if it's a cigarette commercial. Well, now kids are watching YouTube, and they are not being monitored a lot. Even, you know, YouTube kids or even other things, AI is involved in there. And it's important that the parents and the teachers understand it in order to talk to their children. It's in their child's world, and I don't feel like parents and teachers were ever trained. I know that I never took one class during my teacher education to teach me about things about privacy and the internet. And I wish I had taken classes on that. I wish before I became a parent, before I became a teacher, I knew more. And obviously it's changing, but I didn't even have a baseline knowledge. I think the first time I learned about privacy on the internet was when we had a police officer come into our school because students were looking at inappropriate things on YouTube. And there was a case of, you know, somebody else in the community um, you know, as a possible predator. So there was a policeman and they decided to give a talk about it to our students. And I was like, wow, I am woefully unprepared for what my students are facing at a junior high level. And that was about 12 years ago. So what I wanted to say is that, you know, parents and teachers are not getting the training they need to provide students with the skills to differentiate between safe and unsafe sites, robots that they're going to use, the kind of AI around them. 
And I see we've got David here. David, did you have a question that you wanted to uh, ask us? Oh, no, this is an excellent conversation. Uh, you know, I've, I'm coming from the classroom as a, a STEM and computer science teacher. Uh, you know, I, I went through the, uh, the ISTE courses for AI. Yeah. And, you know, one thing I always said, you know, we need to have tools for students to create with AI. You know, you want to introduce them to artificial intelligence in a responsible way. You want to expand their capacity to learn. And artificial intelligence does just that. You know, it, it gives students, you know, it gives all of us that capacity to increase new learning. You know, I, when I look at AI, you know, I want to make sure that we're taking AI technologies, you know, in new directions, you know, new ways for students to create. And there's just so many new, you know, ways for students to create, to, uh, you know, understand and blend and express. So, yeah. you know, excellent conversation. I'm just, I'm kind of just adding to it. So great. Well, point. I'm glad you're here. And I wanted to say I too took that course and I found it to be exceptional. Um, I kept writing and saying, can you please make more courses? And I know that they're in the process of creating more. And I love that teaching AI book. We required all the teachers at our school to read that book um, and to take some of the, you know, the many things that are online for learning about AI as well through ISTE because I feel like that's a great resource and they really um, make sure that it's appropriate for what teachers are going to be teaching the students. So I love that they're already vetting the information, they're finding the sites that are going to be most useful for teachers. But I wish that more schools, I know my students attend, you know, the public school locally here, they, you know, they don't learn anything about computer science or artificial intelligence until seventh grade, they start with some coding classes. But still, I keep asking my daughters, are you learning anything about it at school? Do your teachers talk about it? Is there any conversation? And, you know, they go to a wonderful public school and still, you know, in the whole district that hasn't been started. And some of the professors that I've talked to, the one that was at University of Chicago, she said, one of the reasons that I'm so passionate about this is because my children attend public school here in Chicago. And there is no conversation of this whatsoever. And I feel that it's so important to start children at an elementary school age, she said, we're getting kids out of college who don't have the expertise or the understanding. She said they can code great. They're amazing programmers. They can, you know, they can create whatever you want using programming, but they can't think about what are the consequences of what they're creating. And we love using that chat bot from Microsoft and talking about racial bias with kind of our fourth and fifth grade students at our school. We love, you know, using examples of kind of failed things that companies have done where they realize too late, oh, this negative consequence means that our sales are going to go down and give us bad publicity and be a negative consequence for society. So how to train students now to make better choices when they are programmers or when they are in fields that you know, are affected by AI? Now, now, let me, uh, David, thanks so much for joining the conversation. It's so awesome to have you also, uh, bo both of you, Annabelle and David. Let, uh, here's a question I have for both of you. Um, uh, you know, as I've been um, uh, going through schools, talking to teachers, I see still that there's a level of intimidation uh, by, uh, in terms of bringing AI to their classroom. Mm -hmm. Some of them say, hey, listen, I'm not a computer science teacher or I'm not, I'm not a STEM teacher. Should I even engage or begin to have these conversations with students? What if I don't know? So um, what are your thoughts about that for other teachers that are not necessarily in computer science, but uh, should they remove themselves from this AI conversation? Is this just particularly for, for a particular, let's say, subject matter expertise for, for, for the K-12 market? You know, great question. And I came into the field thinking that computer scientists should be the ones teaching this topic. People who have researched artificial intelligence should be the ones teaching our children about this topic. And that's when I realized that there was this big void in who is actually trained on teaching AI or who can understand it to a level that they can teach it to children. And, you know, I'm very passionate about helping all teachers. I'm a music teacher by trade. I've, you know, only taught music for about 18 years. And then, you know, this AI topic came up at our school. We actually got a grant from Microsoft to be one of the first schools to teach AI and uh, for first grade through eighth grade education. And when that came up, I was writing lesson plans and trying to integrate it with all sorts of history concepts and language arts concepts. And the teacher said, this is awesome. Can you create more? I said, sure. So I kept creating lessons for them to teach. And then somebody came to me, our head of school came to me and said, what about you teaching it? You know, if you understand, you know, if you are passionate about this. And I said, but I feel like somebody with really great experience should teach it. And she said, keep learning, 
keep trying. You go out there and teach this. And that's how I started two and a half years ago, just even getting into the field of AI. So I just wanted to encourage anybody who hasn't stepped into it or anyone who feels like somebody else should be teaching it. It's for every educator out there. It's for every parent to share the information that they know with their child. And nobody is, no child will say, you don't know everything about this. You shouldn't be talking to me about this. I mean, maybe by the teenage years, yeah, that's kind of a conversation and that does come up like you're not the expert on this however if you start your children young and even in the teenage years when they really need you to understand what they're doing a lot of kids at that age will misbehave they've got phones they've got this power that parents cannot harness they don't know where the limits are and what the children are doing um the, the teenagers today are just going way faster than anything that their parents can control on these different social media apps and so starting your kid whatever age there are to say let's learn about this together Let's find these resources together, which, again, are available through ISTE has plenty of resources for parents and for teachers. And let's learn about what these concepts are. There's no time that's too late for a teacher to start learning about it. There's no age that, oh, they're too old. They're already 12. They didn't learn about it yet. I can't teach them. Every age is a great age to start because it's affecting their life right now. Just like they're probably using Netflix or Hulu or some kind of streaming service, Disney Plus. It's using AI, talking to them when they pick their show. How did this know that that might be a show you want to watch next? How did Alexa know that that was something that you'd want to listen to next? In their daily life, saying, how can I improve this? This vacuum cleaner, hey, there's a Roomba, but what about for my washing machine? What could it, you know, let's look online. Wow, they've created one that actually can wash and dry your clothes. So I think staying in their lives around them, you know, talking about smart homes and, you know, even temperature control and things like that. And then also saying, what can you find? Bring me information that you want to talk to me about. And kids will go online and they'll find that for you as well. That's 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 really awesome. I I like how you're using these daily examples. And uh, I don't know if David's still with us. If, if uh, David, have, you have any 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 examples of this as well? Uh, that would be great to hear your your thoughts as well. Yeah, I can add in a few points. You know, coming from the you know middle school classroom and you know teaching STEM and computer science, uh, you know, I was you know able to integrate artificial intelligence across the curriculum. You know, how can we leverage machine learning? How can we leverage AI technologies to take learning in new directions? Uh, you know, a lot of the activity that we worked on with students, we wanted them to use these different creative tools, you know, in Google, you know, using Cosmo and using coding to explore their interests. You know, and not only art, you know, not only in uh, you know, activities across the curriculum, but we want them to have activities across the board that are something new. Uh, you know, how can we, uh, you know, introduce, you know, things like motion activated cameras? How can we introduce CGI in movies? So, you know, one way that we use AI is you know, using that, you know, giving students that access, introducing them something that's new. That's great. And David, where do you teach? Uh, I teach uh, Central Florida. Central Florida. Okay, great. And so do you find that there are other teachers around there that are also teaching AI? Do you have a network of teachers that you can communicate with, that you can share ideas with, or do you feel like you're doing it kind of on your own? You know, we, we built a, a robust network of teachers through ISTE and through our mm -hmm. professional learning networks that we were able to collaborate. We were able to build on our activities. We were able to, you know, uh, you know, find out what works best, you know, what didn't work, and, you know, learn those pitfalls and really branch out and explore with each other. That's fantastic. Yeah, I found that that community feel or that, you know, bouncing ideas back and forth. I know as a music teacher, there were music teachers at every single school, but with AI, you know, all the schools around me, even, you know, the independent gifted schools that are nearby us aren't teaching artificial intelligence. So I find myself like you looking for kind of the ISTE community to see, you know, what other teachers are trying it. But I just, I have this feeling that if everyone was having their STEM teachers or, you know, some schools don't even have a STEM program. So if they were creating kind of a, a space for that to happen, I've talked to many STEM teachers who are very nervous about teaching AI. They say, you know, I teach about robots, I teach about sensors, I teach about these concepts, but we haven't done anything with AI, almost like that's taboo. And I think one of, you know, the things that I'm really passionate about is helping teachers to find that way to teach it. And like you're saying, through ISTE or through, you know, csfirstcode.org have these resources that can bring it for, forward. And now Ready AI is creating 
so many um, tools that teachers can use as well, which I, which I really enjoy using too in my classroom. So no, this is, this is really awesome. Um, let me ask both of you another question because this is something I've been also wondering as uh, obviously it's been over a year. Could you believe it? We are dealing with COVID <laughs> and know. like last year, this time was the beginning of our lockdown. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I, I remember distinctly. So it's, so it's, I can't believe it's been, it's been almost a year and it's been a difficult year. Yeah. So both of you as teachers, as a parent, I know Annabelle, you're all, you're a parent. I don't know about you, mm -hmm. David. Um, but, uh, so for you, um, how, it has, has this been incredibly difficult or challenging to bring more, uh, uh, uh try to introduce children to AI topics when you are, under this pressure of not knowing whether the school is virtual, whether it's physical classroom, there's this pressure of teaching the materials that students are supposed to learn for standardized tests. So how has that impacted the overall AI learning experience? Well, I was expecting it to be extremely difficult this year to teach AI. I know we've got a middle school CSAI teacher at our school who also is teaching the computer science and artificial intelligence concept to the fifth or eighth graders. And, you know, at the beginning of the year, we had this whole plan of what we wanted to do and how each of the, you know, five big ideas we'd roll through and we'd incorporate different lessons with different teachers. Well, once you're standing in that classroom and you're holding an iPad stand in one hand, you've got a voice monitor on, you've got a mask on, you're trying to distance from the kids in front of you. We've got both in-person and remote learning right now. And trying to create these lessons that are, you know, hands-on, but remember, you can't share any of the objects you're using this year in school with any other child. So they either have to have their own um, that you purchased for, for them or that they've bought, or, you know, you're just showing it to them on a Green. And so I was very concerned about how teaching AI would go this year. And I've actually been really surprised at how smoothly the integration with both coding programs that are available from scratch to, you know, we use Tinker, we use all these different programs that work really well um, for virtual students and um, in-person students. And also the concept, you know, AI is all around us. So they're they're sort of feeling it even more this year, I think, because they are on screen so much more. They are with computers and technology and phones so much more. I know that, you know, even my 10-year-old, we didn't imagine giving her a phone until she was maybe, you know, 14 or so. You know, I'd already talked to other parents and teachers. We all said, you know, 14. Well, all of a sudden, she needs to be on one screen for her classes. And if she's trying to contact me or anyone else, she needed another device. So, you know, well, you can do it where the iPod is set up so that they can't go on the internet or anything else, but that they can only talk with you. And so we've created that for her, but all of a sudden new questions come up for her. Can I get a new phone case? How can I use this for AI? Does it have facial recognition? You know, like all these questions that I didn't think my daughter at 10 years old would be thinking about are happening because of this year, because of COVID, because of these things. And then the students are thinking at school in our science class, they're talking about different diseases. Well, obviously the kids are like, how can we use AI to solve the problem of COVID? What can we do with the different strands? You know, can't we teach the machines how to tell the difference between? I mean, they're thinking about these concepts without us even prompting them. So giving them a little bit of knowledge about the field, teaching them some of the things AI can do, and then kind of letting them go with it as well and saying, let's discuss these topics works really well this year. So I've been pleasantly surprised. And if you've held off on using AI in your classroom because of COVID, I would say try between now and we've only got a few months left. We can do this teachers till the end of the school year. And you know, I would say, see if you can bring those conversations in. It doesn't even have to be with tools. It doesn't have to be with robots. It can be a conversation that you are explaining things to the kids and then you are really listening because every single class that I have with students, they are bringing up concepts that are sometimes things I have never seen. They've got virtual reality goggles that I've never tried out and they are trying out new apps, new video games that I didn't know existed, that all have a component of AI, and they are recognizing it, and they want somewhere to talk to people about. They want to know that you understand it or that you're curious about it. I think that curiosity goes a long way as well. So that's kind of what I would say for trying AI, that it's going really well, and that I would encourage other teachers as well to 
to give that a try. No, th- that's really great. And I wonder, you know, all these cool gadgets some of these students have, you know, we haven't seen them. I haven't seen them. Sometimes I go around in the neighborhood. I see kids are using all these coolest gadgets. I wonder what they are. I've never heard of them, never seen them, don't even know how to use them. So right. that's, 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 you're right. That's, that's really interesting. Um, I know we talked a lot about teachers right now, but um, also I want to, uh, I have a few questions about parents. You know, when parents, obviously this is, AI is new to all of us. It's new to us. We've never dealt with recommender systems, be it Netflix or Hulu. We've never dealt with facial recognition or, uh, uh, or machine learning in the manner that we are seeing it in our everyday life, our lives. What is, um, how can also parents, not just necessarily behind the latest gadget for their kids, but and uh, not really trying to say, hey, you need to get into coding or you need to get into computer science or you need to, uh, for example, do X, Y, Z. How can parents, in a way, try to identify but also help their kids about something that they don't know much about, like AI, to make sure that, hey, the kid, uh, their, their children is at least being exposed to it or being uh, uh, or at home able to, uh, even use the most basic things to to learn about AI, despite their their interest might be art, might be sciences, right. and might be computer science. What's the role of the parents here? Okay, so one thing that I've recommended to other parents who have asked me about the same topic is to kind of start small. There are programs out there like Quick Draw, where you just simply can draw an image and AI tries to guess what you're drawing. There are things you can do, again, with Alexa, where you can say, you know, play me a song that, you know, a uh, uh, top 10 song that I'm going to love. And, it, you know, it often finds a song that you've played before. And I think that if you start with kind of things that are around the child that you're with and you start using, you know, AI experiments with Google has lots of different, um, very easy to use from Move Mirror, where you stand in front of the computer screen and as you move it gives you different famous artworks that are similar to your movement um trying to kind of play with ai with your child is a way that you don't need a robot you don't need a lot of expertise on the topic it's a way that you can kind of see visually or you can move to and you know listen to ai as it's being used around you so i would say Instead of being scared of the topic, instead of saying, I don't know enough, I can't start here, say, let's play together. Let's try this new app and let's see what we can come up with to see how AI might work. And Marco, do you have something that you wanted to uh, to add into the conversation here? Hello, everybody. Hi. Hi. I, ju- I just joined now. Great. I was not up with all the, the conversation. I just have time to, to, to join now. But, well, yeah, we're glad to have you on board, Marco. So, hello. Uh, for, uh, hi, how are you? Marco, um, so thus far, we really talked about uh, Annabelle. We had David online. We talked about AI, how they're using AI in their school, uh, and also the resources that's available to them. And then we kind of shifted away. We started talking about parents, and Annabelle said what kind of uh, conversation she's having with parents to get them more involved in bringing AI, uh, AI to, to their children in at their homes. But now, yeah. since I have you joining us from, uh, from Portugal, um, uh, I wonder what is uh, the attitude uh, also, what's a broader European attitude? Again, I don't want to generalize, but when it comes mm-hmm. to AI education and uh, both in the classroom and outside of the classroom, so, um, so where does the state of AI stand, AI education for you in Portugal? Again, uh, p- perhaps a reflection of, of what's going on in Europe. No, yes. Um, uh, for now, a- 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 AI is not a key issue in, in terms of the Portuguese the educational school system. They are starting with some events and some initiatives in order to put that as a key question, uh, as, as, as you know, the, the, the importance and the pertinence of, of AI. Uh, now today, in, in terms of Europe, uh, you, you, you know we have the European Commission, and they just uh, work as a lighthouse in terms of the initiatives and, and, and the politics that the, each uh, member country w- will take, because there is n- not uh, such a thing as 
an uh, European uh, education framework. So each country is responsible for their own uh, educational systems. And just two months ago, the Euro- European Commission they just released an important document. It's called the Action Plan for Digital Education, and they release it from time to time. And in the left one, the the, the one in, in 2021, there were they, they are mentioned to the importance of uh, artificial intelligence, not only the way as they should be used to help teachers and students in the teaching and in the uh, learning process. But at the same time, they are uh, also mentioned the need for students to learn AI in order to, for them to take part in the development in the, in the future of AI, and also in order to prepare them for uh, an AI world. But right now, if you look at the educational system, you don't see anything that is on the curriculum that could help teachers or schools to implement or to integrate AI. What you see right now is only some initiatives. For example, one of them, it was from the Portuguese Ministry of Education. They developed an, an AI, uh, um, sorry, a MOOC about AI in education. European School Net, that is an uh, aggregation of 34 Ministry of Education from Europe. They will release also a MOOC uh, called a, a Basic AI for, for Education. So there is a, a huge field that needs to be, um, a huge gap that needs to be filled right now. And for example, in terms of parents, there is no so much information for them also to, let's say, take some action in helping their, 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 their sons in terms of how important is AI uh, nowadays. So we are just starting, um, like let's say, with some initiatives. We don't have such a thing as you have on the state with the AI for K-12 uh, initiative. But yeah. we are starting, and, and we recognize that is very important. We have a lot of work to do. Yeah, and even with our AI for K-12, you know, that hasn't been adopted by most school systems. So even though that is starting to come around, we're, we're having the same problem here in many of our school systems. You know, they're overwhelmed with this year and, you know, everything that is thrown at us trying to just get teachers in the classroom, you know, is the main focus right now. And teaching AI is somewhere way down on the list. So, so bringing that kind of to the forefront and just, you know, promoting how important that's going to be for our children and for the future of you know, students as they get older in our society, I think across the world, I think is very important as well. Yes, I, I, I completely agree with you, Annabelle. The, the key question, as, as you know, is things are um, uh, happen very, very fast. And each each time that is passing is happening very, very fast. And the, uh, the educational system, they, they always struggle to uh, introduce Anything that is new or is innovative or, or something that the, the students uh, really need to, to learn. And okay. nowadays, for most of the policymakers of education, AI is just something like a little bit esoteric, you know? Yeah. So they are just a little bit lost. And even if, if there are some, some, some people that recognize that the importance is very difficult because the, at least here in Europe, the, Education is, is very centralized, so you don't have such uh, things like autonomy to yeah. change in terms of the curriculum and, and, and things like this. That, that's why we need to keep in put pressure on these policymakers. We need mm-hmm. to, to, to show them uh, how critical is AI uh, nowadays and, and start with, with initiatives and, and, and projects and, and, and bring parents to the discussion. One of the things that really works in terms of um, be able for educational systems also to change a little bit more faster than they, they normally do is to bring parents to, to, to the discussion. And it is something that is, we really need to do also. I agree. And just getting those resources. I know that um, that AI for Everyone course from Finland, I took that course. I'm, I'm in the second one right now, that building AI. And I've really been impressed with with that course. I'm always looking for different classes to just take both to share knowledge Mm -hmm. with other parents and for, you know, teaching as well. I feel like I've kind of got two roles. And I think probably many parents are are in that same thing where, you know, they're a parent and an educator. There's different things that you want to share with your kids at home than they're getting just in the school day at school as well. So, so I'm always kind of just searching out people who want to share ideas with my children and, you know, 
you know, resources that are online or that are available. You know, I would love it if my local town had a thing for children to come and learn about AI and learn about, you know, ethical consequences and societal impacts. I would take my children to that, but there's nothing offered. You know, it's COVID right now, but it could be virtual kind of event too. And I would love it. I think it's a really nice thing when you know locally the other people who are learning about it. It's wonderful to have international communities or national communities as well. But I think especially for kids, they like to see the other kids learning about it too. So I think that parents having more resources and just the willingness to engage in those conversations around the world would be great. But, you know, I'd love to talk to you, Marco, further as well, just about about ways that we can, you know, help locally and help internationally to to get the word out to parents and to educators as well. So I'm glad you're here. Ah, okay, thank you. That will be a pleasure, Hannibal. For me, it's always very important and to talk about this and to see other experience in the way that we can um, put the a- a- AI topic in, 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 in order that everybody knows how, how important it is nowadays. Um, the elements of AI from the uh, University of Helsinki, it was... Yes, uh, that's the one. Yes, yes, it was, it was very important at, at the time. And, and, and Finland, uh, when they... Um, one of the last things that they do, because we have uh, something like uh, uh, each country uh, during six months in the European Commission, they are like the, um, the leaders of the European Commission during that time. Yes. And, and when Finland, they, they lived, uh, it, I think it was in June of the last year, one, one of the things that they, uh, let's say, offer for the other countries, it was the translation of elements of AI for each of the language of right. the European Union. Yes. And there is, uh, I know that it's in Dutch and, and, and another language and, and, and so on. Uh, it's not uh, right now in, in, in Portuguese. Right. But yes, it was, it was something that was really important. But once again, it was just an, an initiative. And yes. that, that was targeted more for uh, general popul- uh, population. Not I did for, find for, that. I did yeah. find that problem, Marco. As I was taking the class, I thought, I can't use these concepts exactly in my class. I can't use these concepts yeah. with my children. You yeah. know, Bayes' theorem is wonderful, but it doesn't really translate to a first grader that well. No, so, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> and, the, and, and, and that was not the target at the time. The, the, yeah. the, aim, the aim of, of the... Uh, um, University of Helsinki and also Reactor. Reactor was the company that was behind the yeah. development of, of, of the MOOC. It was to train 1% of the Finnish population in AI. Right. So we're talking about for people that are uh, over 18. Okay? Yeah. That was, and, 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 they, and they dimensioned that. Uh, and they just released also the ethical AI course in the same line as the elements of, of, of AI. But that will not fill that gap that we are talking about. Correct. In terms of AI from, let's say, first graders to 12th graders or something like exactly. this. Exactly. That is something, because, you know, at least in, in, in Portugal, the, 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 the a life of a teacher is not an easy thing, you know? There is a right. lot of to And mainly, as in other parts of the world, they mainly look at the curriculum. Okay, yeah. so you could have a, a, a group of teachers, they are innovators, they are always trying to learn new things, but that will be, I don't know, I'm just thinking here it here, it could be 1%, I don't know. Okay, yeah. but most, most of the teachers, as you know, just look at the curriculum. Or you, you have to uh, offer them something that they can easily bring into the classroom and bring in terms of, of, of the students. And if you are able to make this association between parents and the schools or the teachers, that will be easier because that way you can start different initiatives that don't have to be curriculum and target. But, Wonderful. Uh, yeah. yeah, and I wanted to get, um, we've got Kay Khans here, and I wanted to see if, uh, if you've got something to add here as well. I'm not sure your first name. So uh, did you have something that uh, you wanted to add as well? Um, I just heard you guys talking about AI for kids. And yep. uh, I, absolutely, I absolutely agree that uh, to start the children at their earlier age um, about AI coding, uh, logical thinking, math skill is so critically important. Yes. Um, and are you a parent or teacher or how are you in, involved in AI for kids? Oh, one second. Uh, I'm sorry. Just one second. I, sorry to jump in there. 
I just need to mention that this call is being recorded so we can put it on YouTube for other teachers and parents to, to listen to. I, I know it says it in the description of uh, description of the, of the room, but I wanted to mention it once again. Sorry that I jumped in the middle of it. No, Please go you. ahead. Continue. Okay. All right. Okay. That's fine. I am a mother of four. Mm -hmm. And uh, my background is math, science, and then uh, a doctorate in education. Wonderful. So, I am um, a big. I am a big fan of STEM in education. Wonderful. So yeah, and what part of where do you live? Well, I live in the United States. Yes, but what part? Oh well, I'm in South Carolina. Okay, and I'm in Chicago. And Ruth, you oh, are where are you located? I'm in Pittsburgh, and Marco is Pittsburgh. in Portugal. Yeah, so we've got a big variety, and I think we had some other people here. We had one from Florida, a teacher here as well. So, you know, from all over talking about the topic. So anything else you wanted to add just about, you know, how AI has impacted your children even? Okay, well, I do see the problem, the problem that you guys just mentioned, that uh, first, I absolutely agree that uh, AI education is critically important for all of our children, no matter what your age. You can mm -hmm. start when you were little because, you know, right now, uh, well, let's put it this way. I have been in education field for many years, and I, I used to be uh, in K-12. And in the last five or six years, I was focusing on early childhood education. So... Mm -hmm. Um, and for so many years in education, I do see the need of, you know, the, the uh, technology education in our, in our children. And I also see the lack of uh, awareness, the lack of support, the lack of uh, qualified, well-trained teachers for this area. Yeah. And right. for my own children, my children, uh, their age is from four to 13 mm -hmm. and they they attend uh let's say private school because i work at private school okay mm -hmm. um so but even with that school with the very good reputation of overall academic ability yep. still there are very lack of uh stem education especially ai education so I, i'm i'm worried about my own kids of course that applies to all of the children in their generation so what I yeah. did was, I also, um, what I did was I asked for outside resources. For example, the online classes. Um, and also, I asked for some parents who have this background or expertise in those areas that, you know, our kids can study together. Um, and mm -hmm. also, what I did was um, I talked to the school as a parent, as an educator, mm -hmm. as, um, you know, a community involved involver let's put it this way that um i address this you know the importance of ai education so i see they're taking some steps but it's not fast enough or not um strong enough uh on yes. this action so i think we really really i absolutely agree with you guys we really need to work together parents teachers schools community plus the state um, officials. We really need to do something in this matter. It's important. Right. We can't wait anymore. I, I completely agree. And I, I think that's kind of where when Ruth and I started talking and we realized that we both had the same passion to bring the message to other parents and teachers to help get that message to school boards, to help, you know, the Department of you know Education to say that this is something that needs to be a vital part of what we're doing, not just a, you know, a subline in ISTE right now. It needs to be kind of the focal point of one of the major things that we're teaching in school, teaching to our children. And, you know, I love the idea of parents, you know, teaching their children at home, but, you know, we, we have free education here in our country. We have these schools with the amazing possibilities to do all sorts of things. And if that can be a central initiative, I really think that we can, we can make a difference in, in AI education for sure. Yeah, the way that we were thinking is uh, if we cannot light the big fire right away, we can at least start to have some small fires, you know, with the smaller community uh, that, you know, with the same awareness of parents um, 
you know, we got to start somewhere. Right. And then when you see, you know, like, uh, you know, I was talking to, to someone who was working in Shanghai and they said, you know, AI education is part of the schools there. You know, there are these whole communities or the whole cities around the world where AI is part of the education. So it's not that, you know, nobody's tried it and we're trying something that's weird and unusual and that shouldn't be taught. If we're using the products that, you know, use AI, if we are engaging in a lifestyle that involves all sorts of AI around us from self-driving cars, you know, to pilotless planes, to all sorts of technology in our homes, it's important that we're aware of what we're using and it's important that we understand the ethical consequences to each of the things that we, we engage in as well. So, Ruth, are there, are there any last questions? I, I think it's nearing our, our one o'clock time. So. I I, I, well, first of all, I want to thank everyone. But uh, before we, um, I, this is the first try we've had, uh, at least from what I know. You know, uh, my colleague uh, Andrew told me that we should be using Clubhouse because it's a good way to have a genuine conversation. And and you know, I listened for the past. Uh, well, I talked a little bit, but I listened mostly for the past hour. And I think from David to Marco uh, to this wonderful. Uh, educator in uh, North Carolina, if North Carolina, if I remember, remember correctly. But also, it was, it was a genuine conversation about uh, uh, for the parents, for, for parents, for teachers, but around AI. So the, um, if Annabelle, because you've done a wonderful job, you are the true moderator, not me. How would you sum up today's conversation um, and... Uh, uh, for, for, for those of us that are going to be listening to the replay of, of, of this chat uh, in the coming days or weeks? Well, I would just say that, you know, hearing other voices from around the country and around the world has really made me even more passionate about this topic that AI is such a critical part of our children's lives, of our students' lives. And starting at, you know, any young age and having parents and teachers who feel comfortable is such an important goal for what us in this conversation, AI for K-12 here in the U.S. and internationally, and for these educators who are some of them going at it alone, who should have this community of support. I think that this conversation gave us both tools and resources that we can use in the classroom and at home, as well as the, the passion, the fire that we need to keep this conversation going, to bring it to other parents, to say that this is not something that you need to be scared of. This is not the Terminator. Instead, this is something that you can have a part in, you can have a role in. If enough people have an opinion on what certain companies are doing, they can make a change. But you have to understand what's happening around you as well. So being able to have those conversations and to say that this is a perfect start, but that so much more is needed and that there's no age too young to get involved in AI. I totally agree, and I can hear the passion in your voice, and I, I also uh, uh, can hear the passion in David's voice, Marco's voice, and I, I totally agree with you. So the purpose uh, for, for us to have a little bit of chat, to, again, as you said, to see, to see what's really going on around the community, what are the tools that are available. There's no, as, and I think one, one thing you said, it, and you said it right, there's no right or wrong way. It's about having a conversation with kids. Obviously, once they become teenagers, they will tell you what is right and what is wrong. <laughs> but until we get to that point, it's about having that conversation. So, so this was our really first uh, first chat on Clubhouse about AI for kids. And I do hope that I, I love to get your feedback. Feel free for those of you that are listening to the replay, feel free to actually ping Annabelle or myself or anyone else and, uh, and uh, tell us what other topics uh, within AI education for kids you'd like to talk about. And I'd like to keep this conversation going and particularly for this reason. Uh, the reason is because uh, in the COVID world, we are so much apart from each other. And these conversations will help us in a way to empathize with each other, to figure out, well, wait a second, what is it that we're doing? And we're not doing it in these uh, islands or these uh, standalone islands. We're all in a way kind of connected. But the, at the end of the day, the, the gist of the conversation that I got from uh, all the speakers was, what does it mean to kind of be a human being in the age of AI? And I think you teachers are doing a marvelous job in attempting to bring this conversation to the classroom and hopefully bring these conversations to our dinner table, tables and living rooms. And I think that itself 
is not appreciated enough and it's not valued enough. So I really want to thank you all for that. Well, thank you, Bruce, for even, you know, setting this up and, and making this, you know, a, a thing that you are so passionate about to bring teachers and, and parents into the conversation as well. So we do appreciate it as well. Yeah, yeah thank you, Drew. Um, I see you. Do you have a company? Are, are you setting up a company? or is, uh, it's, it's, Sure. I know uh, our company is called Ready AI. Right, ReadyAI.org. Visit us on ReadyAI.org. And, um, uh, and if uh, there's anything we can do to help you in the AI conversation, and there is anything you can also teach us about AI conversations and AI journey, uh, let us know. I'd love to hear from you. But uh, feel free to shoot us a, shoot us a message. Um, at, um, my email is simple, ruse at AI at readyai.org. I don't want to make it about the promotion, co- company promotion. I wanted to make sure this is about AI conversation, but uh, feel free to shoot me an email. I, I would be more than happy to answer any questions if I have the answer. If not, I'll look for it. Yeah, the reason I'm asking is I, I really don't think you are a business promoter or something. Is as a as a parent and as an educator, as a teacher, as you know, someone involving community activities uh, so much. We need all of the help and resources to support our actions. Yeah, um, yeah, that's what I. That's my point. That's why I'm asking your company because if we we really need to build up a community, especially for parents, because when children are young, literally parents are deciding what the kids are doing. So as long as the parents are aware of, you know, the importance, and plus a lot of parents, because they're not from science and technology background, they're kind of scared about AI. They don't, they don't know it that much. They don't know enough to open up their mind or get involved in this. And we, I think the community and parents are very important that we need to bring on board. I totally agree with you. And in fact, uh, you know, one of the, one of the, uh, one of the uh, pillars of what uh, we've been trying to focus on and myself personally is to think that we need to have an AI conversation more than AI teaching. Uh, if the more we have this conversation, the broaden that we make this conversation in a way, I think, we're in a in a really a unique position to 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 be able to to be able to have a number one genuine conversation, but number two be able to make it really inclusive. We really don't want this AI topics or concept to uh, or to have this kind of a priesthood of AI scientists or computer scientists that are looking at these things because any issue related to AI will profoundly impact all of us, our societies. And this is new to all of us, but I think we have to have the imagination to, to start the conversation, continue the conversation, but most important to really try to, uh, to bring a lot of stakeholders to the conversation. And I think that's, that's, that the community learning is the best type of learning, in my opinion, because the truth of the matter is interacting with Annabelle or Marco, I've learned I would argue I've learned more from them than I think we've been able to offer them uh, individually in terms of content. So, so I think that's incredibly important. Yes, just to say that was a pleasure and let's make it just the first moment where we are here to talk about AI in, in education and maybe try to bring some more people from the European side also. I think it will be great. Well, yeah, we need, to promote, we need to promote this topic really seriously. Yeah, yeah. No, I love this. And I love the idea of keeping the conversation going. And, you know, if, if it works here on Clubhouse and, you know, we can, we can make this a regular thing where we can talk together and get other experts in the field and educators and parents involved as well. So I, I love that idea. That would be awesome. For the sake of time, I would like to just say thank you all. Um, and, uh, what, what I'll do is I would reach out to every, uh, every one of you to have you be moderated for our next up next AI for kids, which we're going to be talking about various topics for AI and for, 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 um, uh, for teachers and for parents. And we have amazing moderators and great conversations. And I know this clubhouse is so much fun because I get a chance to kind of sit back and just listen more than talking, which I love to do that more and more. So thank you everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Ruth. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone.